We're unmuted. We're unmuted. Okay. At your timing. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the uh, special council meeting for Town of Tabor, September 3rd, 2019. I would uh, first call the meeting order and ask for an adoption of the agenda. Ramos. Uh, could we make a change on the agenda uh, and move item uh, 7.2 uh, to 7.6 and 7.6 up to 7.2? Flip those two around, sir. Tabor Public Library and Tabor Last District County Bus. Sure. Or move everything else up. Yeah, or, or move everything else, at, you know, whatever. Just put the library lost, please. Uh, we can do that. I guess just, just a question just to to move that right to the bottom and everything else moves up. Okay, move and bump everything else and move that to the bottom. That would work, sir. All right, can we just uh, clarify that? I know the, the library board is here also. You okay with that? I think the, the rationale is because of the uh, the amount involved with, with your uh, agenda item compared to the others. Is that fine? Okay. All right. Okay, everyone good with that? Okay. Motion on the table. All in favor? Carried now. Good. Thank you. As amended. As amended. Correct. That's right. All right. On to uh, no item three, four, five, or six. Right, back to item seven. Item 7.1, uh, Tabor District Museum Society, Mr. Armfield. Yeah, and I think I'm going to really turn the directing of traffic in this meeting over to Mr. Orwa. Mr. Orwa is going to introduce each of the uh, speakers and their organizations that they're representing as we go through the agenda. So, Mr. Orwa, please uh, speak into the microphone and uh, take us away. Great, thank you, Mr. Orwa. Well, thank you very much, members of council. So, uh, presenting uh, first on the agenda is Teba District Museum, and I think uh, to present would be Mrs. Ingram. So, I would request you to uh, join me. Hello. I haven't had to see you guys in three years. It's been, nice. <laughs> it's been that long. <laughs> so All I'm right. here tonight for our next three-year budget request. What we have requested is that um, our dollar twenty-five per capita stay, with the population calculation being adjusted to the correct population of today which I understand is 8428 and also an increase of $1,500 per year. Everything else to stay as it has been scheduled to. So that would make our, and that's with the 2020 year. I understand that that had been already approved, but we are asking for this to take effect right away. The reason for this is as you know, our we do a casino once every three years, and so our two out of the three years, we tend to have a deficit. And then the third year, that casino money carries us over. This last three years, we saw that we ended up with a total deficit of about $4,000. So the $1,500 per year will cover that, and hopefully a little bit extra, so that if there's additional expenses with cost of everything going up, all the time, so that that'll leave us at least the break-even point for the next three years. I have included in your packet partial year-end report. That's all the photographs and things to show you what we do do throughout the town. As you know, we have given out pictures to many businesses, and there's some in one of your meeting rooms here that came from us. And we still do that. We still save and preserve, collect items, even though we've had to reduce the volume of things that we can accept because we're just running out of room. So that's what I'm asking for tonight. Any questions? All right, thank you. Any questions arising? 
Councilor Stramas. Your Worship, to our delegation here, you, you made a, a mention about that you're running out of room. So should uh, the Museum Society be budgeting a larger facility? Because uh, you hate to pass up good artifacts that, that bring our history about. So uh, yeah. is that something that you should be working in, in a two or three year budget down the road? We would need a huge amount. And there's no way that our society could afford to sustain a larger building. We would need probably about 10,000 square feet. Um, we're welcome to moving if someone comes up with a building for us. But as a society, we can't do it. Uh, we could probably access some grants as a society, and we are a registered charity if someone were to spearhead that as a possibility for us. But with our group, I just don't see it happening at this time. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other questions? <coughs> Councillor Becker? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Karen, uh, I see the MDF table, you're requesting an additional $1,000 from them for next yes, year. Yes, we will also. We go to right. them in January. How did you arrive at the allocation between the MDF table and the Town of Tabor contribution, please? I'm not sure how it first started, but when I first started there, which was 19 years ago, they were paying at about 4000 and the town was paying at about 8000 And it's been roughly every time I've asked for an increase here, I've asked for an increase through the MD. They don't always, haven't always come across, but right now we're up to 6000 from them. And then they also give us a storage room in the basement of this building that they do not charge us for. And so we consider that in their allocation as well. So uh, since I've asked you guys for 1500 we're going to ask them for at least a thousand, and you know that's a few months away. So who knows? All right. Any other questions? Someone prepared to make a motion, Councilor Brun. Mr. Mayor, I'm prepared to make the motion that Council receives a request for funding from the Tabor and District Museum Society, and further requests as administration include this amount for consideration in the Town of Tabor 2020 amended and 2021-22 budget deliberations. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Karen. Okay, thank you. On to next item, uh, Tabor District Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Armfield. Yes, and again, I'm going to pass this over to Mr. Orwa to do the introductions. Well, even I think before I have introduced Bruce, Bruce is already here. <laughs> so Bruce will be presenting on behalf of the chair. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you for having me here as a, a delegation from the District Tabor and District Chamber of Commerce. I'm here on as a director. Um, I'm also the finance person, so I'm here to request uh, our budget allocation for the next three years. Do we have my request up there? Yep, I can navigate um, to your presentation that you so provided. A bit of history, the Tabor J Chamber of Commerce does the Corn Fest, which you would have all seen just recently. That's our major event. We also take care of the Tourist Information Center. Uh, we do an annual dinner celebrating local businesses. Uh, we do a Midnight Madness to uh, encourage shopping local. And we just advocate for our local members and also any businesses that are in town and area. So we are a, a volunteer board of about a dozen people who are locally employed and interested in bettering the local economy through various efforts such as the things that I've mentioned. So in the past five years since I've been coming here, we've asked for $20,000 per year and our request is not substantially different than that. As you all know, there are some cost escalations with wages and other costs. Things don't stay at 0% increase. So we've got 20,000 for 2020, 21 for 2021, and 22 for 2022. There's no relationship there at all. <laughs> so 
that is the gist of why I'm here. I provided, provided you with, or we provided you with a forecast of how the next three years could look for our, our operation as of right now. Anybody trying to predict the future is knows it's a bit of a fool's game because, you know, things can change. But uh, as of right now, that's a likely scenario that's going to happen the next few years. And we do have a uh, bit of a reserve. I've been here before in the previous years to uh, build a building at some point to showcase our local business and uh, maybe work with some other organizations in the town to work together to to do that. So we have some money set aside and I presented or provided with our our financial statements for the year ended September 30th, 2018 to, to John. If you want to look at them, I don't think they're up there, but our year into September 30th, so our current year isn't done quite yet. All right, thank you. Any questions arising? Councilor Stravas? Yes, Your Worship, to uh, Mr. Warkentine here. <coughs> uh, you made mention, of course, that uh, costs are going up every year, but yet I don't see you passing any of those costs back on to your membership. You've got it straight lined at 30000 across. Fair statement. It had been since a membership uh, fee was, was put through as an increase. It was two years ago. Might be something that you might want to reflect on as, as I mean, all businesses are quite aware that, that costs do, do go up as you indicated. So, you know, an increase there might, might be a, a wise decision. Better to put up a, a small one than, than a large one somewhere down the road. Councillor Garner? I agree with Councillor Strauss, but I would also remind everyone that uh, I think it was three years ago the Chamber donated a $153,000 facility to the town, which we have got really good use out of, not only the town, but uh, the Chamber and various other groups. So I think you've got to take that into consideration too. All right. Any other questions? <coughs> Some are prepared to make a motion. Councilor Garner. A motion. The council receives a request for funding for, from the Tabor and District Chamber of Commerce and further requests that, the admin, that administration include the, this amount for consideration in the Town of Tabor 2020 amended and 2021 to 2022 budget deliberations. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? Mr. All in favor? Mr. Mayor. Councilor Brown. I was just wondering, we don't, when we say this amount, we don't say the amount there. Do we not have to have that in the motion, the amount that we're <coughs> going for? But. No, Mr. Orwell, I think he's happy that that information is in the background of the request for decision, so that can be gleaned from the background information. Once again, motion <coughs> on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, uh, Tabor Food Bank Society, Mr. Arfield. Mr. Orwa. I am uh, <coughs> presenting for Tabor Food Bank is Mr. Lee Kevin, right? Yep. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, members of council, for inviting us tonight. Uh, with me is Matilda Van Heisen, our treasurer for the Tabor Food Bank as well. My position right now is president of the Tabor Food Bank. Uh, today, we are asking you for, as we have in the past, a, uh, uh, to cover our taxes, property taxes, which we always get a statement from you, thank you, for zero, and we appreciate that. We ask that you continue to do that. The other thing we're now asking for is that you cover our uh, water and sewer uh, as well. In our budget, it shows it uh, going up approximately $100 a year, with this year at uh, approximately $2,300. Yeah. And we've raised that value by $100 per year, and we're asking that you cover that as well for us. So. Thank you. Any right. questions? That's Matilda can answer basic. All. Yeah, all right, Phil. <laughs> you're on. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Becker. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the question I would ask is, the request for utility, water and power? Water and sewer. Water not and power. sewer. Not power. Water and sewer is, that's a new request then, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other questions arising? May I, have, uh, may I ask a question? Um, 
I've only been on uh, Treasury for a few years, so I'm not sure if we request that you pay for our taxes or if that's just been done automatically or if that happens through this meeting. Like, I've only ever seen the statement for the last three years and it has been zero. So I didn't know if that was a request that we made to you to pay our taxes or if that was a, um, that was something that was just done. Right, I'm not sure I can answer that one, Mr. Armfield. I'll give it a shot. Might need some support here, Mr. Orwell. But because of that, you're the type of facility that you are, that you're exempt under the uh, what's a piece of legislation in the province that escapes me. But there is a piece of legislation that allows us to exempt your taxes okay. from our tax roll. So, do we put that in a request each year? Like we're also trying to update our records so that. So in the next people, in the next in people in coming in three years, they're going to know. I don't believe that you have to formally make a request. There'll be an there will be an initial request from your organization, but then once we know that you meet the standards of that tax waiver uh, requirements in the legislation, we don't um, book forms, your revenue. Those are the forms that we fill out. Yeah. Okay. So we never book revenue from you within okay. our tax program. So the the request then is just for the town of Tabor utility bill. Okay, just to confirm on the on the, the tax question there, at some point the Tabor Food Bank would have asked for that process and then that was just undertaken accordingly? Um, they may not have not officially asked for that. That okay. may have just been something that we've done in due course because they're exempt under the legislation. I see. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Do you want to add anything to that? I have seen the forms, yes, yeah, we've filled them, okay. So All there's, right. there's no update yearly requirement or every few years or whatever? They, they send a form out once a year and we fill it out and send okay. it back and I see. nothing right. ever really changes. So. But is that the town or is that the province? <clears throat> That's from the town. Oh, it's from the town? Okay, okay. So it's part of your process then, Mr. Orwell. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, great. Any questions arising? Someone prepared to make a motion? Councilor Firth? Mayor, I move that Council receives the request for, for funding from the Tabor Food Bank Society and further requests that administration include this amount for consideration in the Town of Tabor 2020 amended and 2021 to 2022 budget deliberations. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, members of Council. On to our next uh, delegation, Tabor Communities in Bloom. Mr. Armfield, Mr. Roy. So the next is uh, Communities in Bloom, uh, Ms. Uh, Holman. Hello, everyone. Hello. I'd just like to give you a little bit of information about our group. We haven't updated this for a long time. We have around 25 members. Everybody has projects that they do. Some of us live in the MD, most of us live in town. I am the president, or she's the vice president. We are a society and we have not requested any change to the budget for 2020. In the fall of last year there were 20 new planters purchased for the downtown and if we put $50 in each planter if you multiply that it's a thousand dollars so we have asked for an increase of a thousand dollars for the two years following next year and that will take care of the flowers for that and also if there's anything left over then maybe we have a little bit of money for any new projects that we might want to undertake Anybody need anything repeated? <laughs> <laughs> so far, so No, I think we heard it all. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Anybody have any questions? All right. <coughs> any questions arising? None whatsoever. Someone appeared to make a motion. Councillor Bruin. I'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor, that uh, Council receives a request from funding from the Tabor Communities in Bloom and further requests that administration include this amount for consideration in the town of Tabor. 2020 amended and 21 22 budget deliberations. 
All right. Thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carrie Nelson. Thank you very much. Thank you. On to uh, the next item, Tabor District Candy Bus Association. Mr. Armfield, Mr. Orwell. So I think, uh, <coughs> Sorry, members of council, I think uh, the, mm -hmm. the person in charge just called and said she, he will not be able to make it today. I think uh, he's just uh, one person out there and uh, he's out on vacation. So he'll not be able to make it, but we could show uh, exactly how much uh, they are requesting. Like you could see in 2020, uh, what has already been approved in the 2020 budget is uh, 83,875, and the proposal amount is 87,257. So they're asking for about uh, 3,382 increase in 2020. And then we also have the subsequent years also included. All right, I uh, just wonder if uh, Councillor Garner or Councillor Firth can add anything to that being part of that board at all. Go ahead, Carly. If you have so, I, I don't have anything additional to add to that. Okay, so no other questions arising. I guess we can't really turn that over back to Mr. Earl. In all fairness, it should be back to the, the uh, board representative. Um, okay. I think that should cover it. So, uh, someone prepared to make a motion? Councilor Stramas? Your yeah, Worship, I'll make the motion that <coughs> Council receives the request for funding from the Tabor and District Handy Bus Association and further request that administration include the amounts for consideration in the Town of Tabor 2020 amended and 2021 2022 budget deliberations. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Next item, uh, Tabor Public Library. Mr. Armfield, Mr. Orwa. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Orwa. Yeah, I think uh, the Tabor Library, I think we have uh, a whole team here. But I think uh, the team will be led by Ms. Detka, uh, the manager. And then the others will support, I believe. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, so... Yes, we have a large presentation for you, but I was told we have max 15 minutes, so we'll go through all the important information quickly. Um, so a lot of the data that we had for you um, is similar to what I presented earlier, so I'm not going to represent that data the same way that we did before. Um, what I will say, just a reminder that in 2015, we got rid of um, we got rid of membership fees um, because it was seen as a barrier to access and since doing that um, our membership has grown. Um, so that just shows that those membership fees were indeed a barrier to access. So um, just going through um, the slides we have here, um, we spent, um, in 2018, TPL staff spent 127 hours creating and updating memberships. Um, we had um, growth of 22% since doing away with those membership fees. And so, of course, spending 127 hours <coughs> making up those membership fees or membership cards, um, that just means that we've got more staff hours, um, more staff hours put towards that, that we have more people borrowing books, more people coming in to use our space, so therefore we need more staffing. Um, as well with our visits, um, we had 63,984 visitors in 2018, so that comes to about 5,332 visitors each month, and that's just people coming in the door. Um, so again, that has grown, um, both our online and our in-person visits since 2015, um, and of course more visits mean more people using our materials, attending programs, using um, the library as a as a space to just spend their time, whether alone or with a group, um, and all of this means more work for our staff. Um, so more questions to answer, more books to find, more books to reshelve, and more programs um, to prepare. 
Um, in regards to user statistics with the reference interactions, we have approximately 136 questions asked a day. Um, those have gone down a bit since 2015. Um, we assume that that is because of our website is it's answering many of those ready reference questions. What time are you open? Is this book in your collection? Questions like that. Um, but that said, our in-house use has actually increased by 42%. Um, in regards to items borrowed, we're up. Um, circulation is up to 86,860 items. Um, so again, more memberships, more foot traffic, more items going out. Um, interlibrary loans are also going up quite a bit. Um, and that's because the awareness that this um, is freely available to our patrons um, and they are now aware and they can access it themselves. And we've got lots of people requesting items <coughs> from all the way from Calgary, Edmonton, Halifax, even from down in Texas. Um, and again, more visitors means more stuff used. Um, so then with our computer use, in 2018, we averaged 17 computer users a day. Um, we are open approximately 312 days a year. Um, so that's to 17 users a day. Um, people are using this for checking in with family and friends, playing games, researching their family heritage, taking online courses, and preparing their resumes and applying for jobs online. Um, in regards to Wi-Fi, in 2018, we had approximately 71 Wi-Fi clients a day. Uh, our Wi-Fi is available from nine till nine, 365 days of the year. And last but not least with program or with stats is program attendance and that's grown by 35% since 2015. Um, our average has grown from 15 attendees to 23 um, and and, and we can only see that being a similar um, similar case with our 2019 stats, whether it's um, collection use, people attending the, the building or people attending programs, we see that 2019 is going to project some very similar numbers. Um, so that said, the Public Library Service Branch has a best practice document um, that all libraries are to use this to gauge their services that they are providing. And according to the PLSB, um, Tabor Public Library is currently operating at essential levels, meaning that in general we are operating at a pretty basic level. Um, as our population grows, so will our user base, and as our user base grows, so will the amount of work that our staff does. With more work being done, we need to be cognizant of the fact that there will need to be staff hours added to ensure that we continue to provide at least this basic level of service to our users. Um, so um, what I thought was most important here um, is that um, I believe in the slide that I sent along to you all, um, we'll kind of forward through the next section. Again, it's very similar information to what we shared before, um, the kind of programs that we offer, what libraries are supposed to do in the community, um, that with our new plan of service we are focusing on knowing your community, satisfying your curiosity, stimulating your imagination, and visiting a comfortable place, um, and keep all of those in mind. So I'm just skipping ahead again. We've been doing all of these partnered programs. Um, we've included, um, in 2019, what we've included is just up to date, um, not including what we're planning in the next September, October, November, December, four months. Um, so we've been very busy partnering with local organizations, local fitness instructors to offer low cost, no cost programming um, to our community and making them aware of what's available in their community. So anyway, so I am fast forwarding to slide number 27, um, where according to our 2018 statistics, we are worth $1.4 million um, to this community. And this is um, figured out <coughs> using our, plugging in our 2018 stats um, to the American Library Association's library value calculator. So just so you know, that's where that number comes from. So with that, um, again, we have the same information that we had in our last presentation about um, 2015 to 2018. Um, 2019, you graciously updated our, um, our 
allocation um, by approximately $40,000, and we greatly appreciate that. Um, but in 2020, we are asking for more. At this point in time, um, again, as everyone else has pointed out, things are going up. Um, we don't have any additional reserves to spend as we've spent all of our kind of additional funding. What is left is our emergency funding. Um, we have expected year over year increases of those mandatory costs. Um, such as in, um, insurance, cost of living, um, our Chinook Arch Library Board membership fees, other service fees, as well as um, upkeeping capital furniture and equipment in the building. Um, and changes to other funding as well. Um, currently, we have only received 50% of our provincial operating grant um, with the other 50% um, currently under review. We do not know what that decision will be until the province puts out their um, their budget. So at this point in time, we have only included what we have currently received um, in the budget because we just don't know. <coughs> um, so in 2020, our um, overall budget will be $435,119.20. And so um, we do have revenue coming in though, aside from the town. Um, we do charge for certain services um, and we receive a small amount of revenue from those services. So for example, overdue fines are 25 cents to $2 a day. Included in the additional documentation, we've included um, what all of the other Chinook Arch libraries charge for overdue fees. And you will see we are the most expensive um, in the region. Um, we also have facility rentals at $15 a day for our small room or $25 an hour for our large room. Um, and this is comparable to the nonprofit rates of other spaces in town. Um, printing and photocopying, um, we charge for that. We charge for replacement cards, we charge for faxing, we charge for exam proctoring, um, as well as any non-resident card, um, that's $50. And that's just someone who doesn't live within the Chinook Arch region. Um, so again, if someone lives in, um, I'm just thinking, what's that one community? Just oh, Bow Island, they would have to pay um, the $50 to use a Tabor Public Library card. Um, anyway, so yes, and again, our provincial funding has um, been halted at 50% for now. So with our 2020 budget, we've broken that down again. You can see the majority of that is our staffing um, and other mandatory expenses, um, but specifically our employee salaries are the largest. We only have 4.39 FTE staff um, and one FTE manager. Um, this means a total of 5.39 total FTE staff working at the library with frontline staff starting at $16 an hour. Um, so then I'm on slide number 36. Um, with our 2020 budget, um, if you're looking at that graph and it's a little jarring, um, so I would first like to point out that the stats that this is, or the numbers that these are pulling from are for 2016. Um, there should be newer ones coming out soon, we hope. Um, but I would also like to point that um, we are hoping to increase our per capita spending to 33.27 per capita. Um, in 2020, we're asking for an increase. That means of 1245. Um, sorry, that was, where am I going here? We're asking for a 3968 per capita increase for 2020. Sorry, the number before is 2019. Um, and as I said, that, that graph um, might be a little jarring, <coughs> um, but that's again, because we're budgeting for that provincial operating grant of only being half of what um, we originally expected in 2019. Um, so we've received $23,254 with that. Um, and of course, that's still under review. So with only half of the provincial allocation, we're asking for $357,075, or $357,075, oh my goodness, from the town. Um, and this is divided by, by um, an estimated population of 9,000. So that's 39.68 per capita. Um, again, with our full provincial allocation, we'd be asking for a little different of a number, but we've included what we currently know. Um, so we still do what we can to boost that revenue. We have our jingle craft sale, the book sales, the escape room. Um, donations go towards anything that we weren't um, kind of like wish list items. Um, 
So we are also um, applying for working grants for summer students. Um, Young Canada Works, we are receiving approximately um, $11,404 for that. Um, we participate in TD Cala's Youth Employment Program um, and we are applying for grants. So we did receive $2,600 from the Lethbridge Community Foundation to update the AV equipment in our program room um, and we've received or $4,500 from the Police Association in town here um, for a video gaming setup in our teen area. So with our 2020 budget, um, that's that's what we're asking for. Um, with going forward, we do ask for an increase every year as well, just to keep up with um, all those mandatory costs. Um, but otherwise, unless Erica has anything to add, that is really what I have to say. All right. Thank you, Erica. Anything else? Okay, Cindy, you're good too. Okay, Councillor Travis. Yes, Your Worship, to our delegation here. Uh, just off of your your uh, your budget here from from 2018 to 2022, mm -hmm. uh, you've got roughly a 50 percent increase there uh, in in requisition for funds. But you stated you had a 22 percent increase in in uh, clients because you don't charge uh, uh, fees anymore. And then I look at the uh, uh, MD of Tabor grant, and they haven't went up. Uh, to the same degree. Can you give us an explanation? We approached them, what month would that have been? End of April. End of April. Um, we approached them the end of April to um, request an increase. Um, we did request, if I go into the MD grant, um, we increased, so again, they've got six libraries they need to support in the MD. So um, we did ask them for an increase. It's just how they cut it up. Um, and so that is, yeah. So you were turned down by the MD, is that what you're saying? Um, they are, they're looking at it for their 2020 budget, but this was presented in April. And if you look at the uh, proportionate percentage shares, it's, mm -hmm it's uh, sadly out of whack. You know, when you, when you consider 22% increase in clients and, and a 50% <coughs> increase in the budget and, and MD, uh, you know, significantly less than that. Uh, just, uh, just those figures uh, uh, just don't sit uh, totally comfortable with me. So I believe that our town membership um, increased by 26% and our MD membership grew by 8% in those years. So most of that growth is town growth. Oh, but you, you, you indicated 22% is what you said in your... Well, yes, yeah, so 22% in total, um, but we've also got it broken down in the graph. Um, You'll see that the um, MD is the lighter color and the town is the darker color. And it was the town that grew by 26%. So in total, we grew by 22%, town membership by 26 MD membership by 8%. Still uh, stating that you, we grew by 26%, but you got a 50% increase in your budget. And that's, that's the correlation I have. And that was, we were using up our... Um, our um, what's that? Our reserve, our reserve amounts. Um, so that's so. Yeah. So now that we've used up all that additional reserve amounts, that's why we're asking for this increase. Thank you. Right, Councilor Bickering. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Madam, if you would receive, or be fortunate enough to receive the full amount from the provincial operating grant, how, which is about twenty-three thousand dollars, how would that be reflected in your um, request? Yep, so our request would go down the $23,000 or however much for our full. Yeah. Thank you. Great. And Councillor Garner. As, as, as I've read over your presentation, I, I guess I have a question in my mind in that I'm wondering as a town of Tabor, are we duplicating a service here? When I read uh, your vision statement being, you know, to provide information, education, recreational and cultural activities. We as the town of Tabor just instituted a an ACE director, which is a full-time position. And so I'm wondering if that's not a duplication. Um, you know, I'm sure that 
maybe there's some overlap there, but I'm wondering if we could maybe take that, some of that away from you and give it to that person um, who would maybe free up some funding for you. That's a good question. Because I don't, I don't see the need. I mean, uh, to be honest with you, I don't see the need to run two programs, recreational programs for the town. I think we should do it or else you should do it. Yeah, so what had happened with a lot of our, so again, our plan of service or our, our mission statement has been our mission statement for, I don't even know how long, a while, a long while. Um, and so when we did our needs assessment um, in 2018, we found that there was a great need for um, affordable recreation opportunities, um, that there was nowhere offer, offering low cost, no cost um again, those, those recreational opportunities. So um, we've recently partnered with local fitness instructors to provide those. Um, so again, that was because we found there was that need for that. Um, so at this point in time, if that was something that the town was going to be looking at, we would reflect upon what sort of programs we're offering. But we had heard from many of our patrons through surveys, um, both in person and online, that those were the sort of things that they were looking for. So that's where we kind of filled in that recreational need. Um, but I guess we could also be seeing it more as a leisure, um, just in general. Like, of course, we're not offering formal education. We're not teaching K through 12 schooling. We're not teaching college. We're offering personal development or professional development opportunities for people. Same with the recreational. It's more of a leisure. And, yeah. But yeah, that's definitely something that... Yeah, I think we have to look at that. In, in my mind, I, I think we'd be foolish to go forward having two competing programs, in my mind anyway. All right, Councillor Bickering. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, your presentation said uh, your, your, the, the total request for 2019 is about $39 in some sense per capita. Mm -hmm. How does that compare and reflect uh, on other communities? Sure. Um, so we have, which slide is that? That's the one that I was saying that the graph looks a little jarring. Um, let me get to it here. So it's, I have it at slide 36. Um, so um, we are currently asking, so the 2020 budget of 39.68 per capita is above provincial average. And that is because we are making up for that provincial operating grant, um, not like only half being there. So, um, like I said, it is above um, average for our community size as well as above provincial average. These numbers I have are from 2016, so I don't know what other libraries have been offering 2017, 2018, 2019, or sorry, what other municipalities are offering in those years. These are the most recent numbers I have. Um, if we do receive our full provincial allocation, um, we would be asking for $333,821.20 from the town, um, divided by that estimated population of 9,000, um, being $37.09 per capita. Um, and so that is, again, um, above um, populations of a similar size, but not above any provincial um, allocation or provincial average. Does that answer your question? Perhaps uh, you could state a uh, community similar size. How much higher are we? For sure. Um, so they were saying a population between 5,000 and 10,000. Um, the average spending was 3327 okay. But provincially, it was 3891 if that's what we're... Yeah. Any other questions arising? All right, so I'm prepared to make a motion. <clears throat> Councillor Firth. <laughs> Got it. I move that Council receives the request for funding from Tabor Public Library and further requests that administration include this amount for consideration in the Town of Tabor 2020 amended and 2021 to 2022 budget deliberations. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Councillor Travis. Um, 
I understand where, where, where Council Firth is going with it, but that's a huge increase, and I'm, you know, I, I at this point, I, I can't support that kind of an increase on, on a go-forward basis. Um, I, I think this budget needs to be re-looked at by, by the library. Um, um, I'm just not, not comfortable with that type of an increase. Uh, there, there are certain things in their mission statement that, that just don't sit well with me, like the recreational. Um, I agree with Councillor uh, uh, Garner here. I mean, you know, it's. Uh, I think the library is, is educational and, and reading. I'm not quite sure where the recreational comes into it, and um, I, I, I don't see. I can't go forward with this. May I just comment on the recreational part. So part of it is that literacies are beyond just the ability to read. Um, so recreational ties in in the way that physical literacy um, is something that we're also looking at. So that is understanding how your body works. And so that's why we've been doing some of those recreational things. And some of that right. is further broken down. We have kids, the people who take out frisbees and beanbag tosses and games like that. So we're not talking libraries are taking on these initiatives whether it's bicycles or tools things like that so we're just sort of following that um, example that is set in building on those other literacies so yes the the reading is important but those physical literacies that also help us build those skills is where that recreational part is coming in just a clarification on that uh is that 12 months out of the year or is that mainly for the summer program you've got going there the recreational side that you um, speak of sorry so the kits that you're thinking of are mostly for the summer but we do we're offering like the yoga and things like that and we have walking poles um that so you do some some recreation all year long yeah okay but more so in the summer related to the the kids programs there correct Okay, thank you. I guess, yeah, those kits are available throughout the year, but of course, if there's snow, you can't really play bocce ball. So. Great, yeah. Okay. Councillor Bruin. Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to say I, I have to agree with Councillor Strolis on this. Um, this is 125000 this year forever. Like, it's not just a one time deal. So, we're increasing our budget every year from here on up 125000 plus because the needs are going to go up again, of course. I think we have to really have a hard look at this and do some uh, pencil sharpening to get this money down because I have a hard time increasing the 125000 yearly. So. As with the last time, we're happy to look at these numbers with you again. We did go forward with Mr. Orloff and Mr. Coates. Uh, we talked with uh, your procurement thinking with uh, these to look at the numbers that we are spending. We did do some <coughs> increasing in those. There wasn't a lot of wiggle room. You can see some of the there are wages, WCB, insurance has been a big one for us that just continues to go up. So we are certainly open to again discussing this, your ideas further, but um, yeah, we're open to that discussion. I'm just wondering, uh, Mr. Earl, or sorry, Mr. Armfeld, um, if this is a fair question at this stage, but is this something that we could possibly do uh, along with the MD as well? and or the, the library board consultation wise with because of the number the, the extraordinary increase here uh, I mean they haven't been to the MD yet on this particular budget format <clears throat> so is that a fair question at this stage yeah council could pass a motion to direct us to organize an intermunicipal committee meeting to have a discussion about it uh, or to uh, have a meeting and has, have it on the agenda, the joint council meetings that's coming up. It's up to council to give us direction. We can do either one of those. Yeah, it's, I'm certainly uh, willing to hear some other input on that note from any other council member as well. But it just seems to me that this is because of the large increase. And it's uh, right now the, the brunt of this, <coughs> the ask is on the town of Tabor's shoulders. So in all fairness, I, I think that would be a wise choice and uh, potential viable solution if that's possible. Councillor Becker? Yeah, thank you Mr. Mayor. There's no doubt I agree with Councillor Strovers and Bruin and Councillor Garden. There's just that, that's a huge increase. There's no doubt about that. But I guess 
the fact that you people have budgeted the last number of years with the reserve, that, which you shouldn't have done probably, but you did, reflects this incre- a huge increase, right? Had had you had a regular budget with no reserve take out the last three years, you wouldn't see this large increase, would you? Correct. It's been since 2015 the same ask, and we have spent those reserves as a way to try to be fiscally responsible. We didn't want to come to you with $100,000 plus sitting in our bank account asking for more money. We didn't think that was fair. So. Right, I think, yeah, that was, uh, that was your library board call, right? I believe I was sat in one of those meetings where that came up, and that was very, you know, commendable, actually, to go that route. And uh, I believe as uh, Ms. Vargas, Cindy, s- said that that was kind of the, the, the stance and the uh, process you undertook going forward. So as Councillor Becker indicates, that would have changed things a lot, for sure. But still, we're, we're at this, I guess, a bit of that dilemma phase where Mr. Armford, I, I like that idea, if that's uh, everybody else on board with that as a possibility. Uh, Councilor Groom? I just say I agree with you, Andy. I think, Mr. Mayor, that we should uh, bring this to our joint meeting with the MD. So, everybody else okay with that, Councilor Becker? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's pr- probably correct, but we're, we're, we're debating a motion here, and we shouldn't be talking about no. alternatives. <clears throat> that's what I was just going to ask, uh, if uh, number one, if Councilor Firth is okay with either... either uh, uh, a friendly amendment or withdrawing that motion altogether and going with another motion? Um, I, if that is the general feeling of council, I can certainly do that. I just had a comment that, you know, the library board did a fiscally responsible thing by spending those reserves. And now, yes, that I don't disagree. That is a big number. That's a big increase. However, they did the fiscally responsible thing, and I wonder now if we aren't punishing them for doing that. If they had gone, they could have gone forward and asked for an increase every single year, like most organizations that we fund. They didn't. And now, now that is a big number that we're looking at, and I just think that we need to take that into consideration and be fair when we're making these decisions. All right, any other comments? Councilor Gurner. <coughs> I, I agree somewhat with what you say, Councillor Firth, but at the end of the day for me, there's still duplication here. And we have a full-time recreation department. They're fully f- staffed. We have an excellent facility here that we can use at our disposal. And now we're trying to duplicate that in a smaller form over there. I think it's <coughs> just, a, I think we need to revisit the mission statement here and just let's put our, all, all of our eggs in one basket instead of two. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through to Councillor Garner, with respect, when's the last time you visited the library to see what they offer? Uh, several years ago, okay. but I understand recreation and I understand cultural events really well in this town. Right. Um, and I'm not telling you that you're wrong, but uh, I think that the recreational opportunities that the library affords and the ones that the town of Tabor affords are quite different. Um, and I mean, varying recreational needs for every everybody is that's life. I, not everybody wants to do the same thing for fun. But what the library offers is low cost or no cost opportunities for families. Whereas the town of Tabor, of course, needs to we need to recoup some of our costs. So most we don't offer a a lot of low or no cost alternatives, and. I mean, for good reason. It costs money to run a pool. It costs money to run an arena. But a lot of, I I don't see, my point is I don't see a lot of overlap between what the library offers and what the town of Tabor offers. I think they are complementary to each other. And certainly I would hope that if they are duplicating, that the library or the town would look at that and kind of diverge. Because I agree, we shouldn't be running parallel programs that compete with each other. That doesn't make sense. Councilor uh, Brun. Just further that, um, I agree somewhat with uh, Councilor Firth. Um, I think it is a whole different venue. You're doing things for kids that they can le- learn to read better and stuff like that with your recreation. So I think <coughs> things like that and being able to go get bean bags if you can't afford to buy them, you can rent them, I understand, and stuff like that. I have no problem with that. Um, 
I think if we're going, to, if we see any duplication in this at all, it's going to be our education system. Why are we so busy at the library teaching kids how to read when they, what's happened? Why, why are we relying on our library for these basic needs of learning so much when we, kids are supposed to be going to school learn this stuff? So there's lots of questions. We're relying on that so much. I think that's an enhancement, I would think. Is it not? What's, yeah, what's, your, what's your offering there? Yeah, again, a lot of it is um, reading for pleasure. Um, we, we don't run. Um, I know a lot of the schools do like reading buddies where they have older kids go to go see the younger kids and they read together. We don't have um, that sort of a program. We, do, we don't do um, like that sort of like formal education. Again, a lot of it is that reading for pleasure, reading for fun, um, learning to like reading, that sort of thing. Also, just to clarify, is that your recreational offers you have there is that always at the library or is, or is it somewhere is it somewhere else different cases there so all of the recreational for the most part yes in the summer um we did run a stay and play in collaboration with the recreation department where we took our recreational kits like the beanbag toss and things like that um and we took it to one of the parks and families could come gather play with our stuff play on the park equipment and then go home so we did do bulk that is the right at the one. library itself yeah okay great thank you Okay, once again, we do have a motion on the table, unless you, as I suggested, want to do either <coughs> one of those choices, or you want to stick with your original motion. Uh, I can certainly withdraw the motion if uh, council feels that we would like to debate this further with the MD. So you'd like to withdraw that motion, okay. Motion. All right, thank you. Someone prepared to make uh, another motion. Councilor Stravos. Uh, Your Worship, I make a motion that uh, that uh, Council refers this item to the uh, Inter-Municipal Development Committee and or uh, to the uh, uh, collaborative meetings between the MD and, and the and the and the town <coughs> uh, for further discussion. All right, thank you. Motion on the table. Any further discussion? Councilor Becker? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I would probably support uh, Council Strobel's motion if you would indicate not either or, but one or the other. I think it's probably correct. The correct venue would be the combined MD of Tabor, Town of Tabor Council meeting, as opposed to the Municipal Development Committee. I'll take that friendly amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. All right. So just to clarify for this next upcoming meeting. Okay. Everybody on board with that? All right. Uh, friendly amendment motion on the table. Any further discussion? All in favor? Carried now. Good. Thank you. All right. We're on to media inquiries. Tabor Times. Trevor. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Someone prepared to make a motion to close the meeting. Councilor First. Motion on the table. All in favor? Carried now. Good. Thank you. I'll be here all night. <laughs>